Usually we do this in the next like two or three weeks, usually. We make what's called a ladder hook. Okay? So on Wednesday, when you come to lab, each and every one of you will need your print. Okay? I'm giving you warning now. Come to lab with your print of this, okay? Because I will give a demonstration on how to use a, this is called a combination square, 90 and a 45. We will go to the piranha. We will lay out our stock. We use a tape measure and the square and a scriber. We will lay everything out. We will put it in the piranha. Do you remember the first night in lab how we sheared off the screw? We will actually shear off the flat stock. Okay? Then we will trim the ends that we lay out. Then we put what's called a four-way brake die in. And we will bend this. And then we will put the punch in and we will punch these holes. That's what that's for. Um, usually, if you bend it, it should possibly fit in the box. That box you guys have, that Rubbermaid box. When you shear it off, it won't fit in the box. But since we're not doing much in the lab, well, we will be doing stuff in the lab. Whoever's behind with their nut can work in the lathe and get caught up. Everybody should be able to catch up their screw and their nut and take the little knobs face them off, get the little nibble off the end, there's a little tit on the end, face them off, get that all done. So you should have your nut and your screw completely done. As a matter of fact, what I may also do is I may have you turn down set screws. Your vise will require three set screws. Okay. They act as a key. If you look at the print, on your jaw, there is a 3 16 slot that you will cut when you get, when, whenever the bookstore has them ready. So what we will do is turn down three set screws. There's one for the key, one we put a little pocket in the nut, but we can't do that till we get to casting. Okay. Because we will match it to it. Because everyone's casting will be a little different. So you really can't put the pocket in. Then you have, see if you look at the, the drawing, the assembly drawing, there's one, two, three. Then there's one that goes right here. Where it says 188 wide, okay. So you want to turn it down to like 185, 186, okay. So you will need three of them. So we can do that also on Wednesday night. So A, we can work on a ladder hook. That'll be the first demonstration, as we'll do that. And then we will do. I will do a demonstration on how to turn the set screws down. I have a couple fixtures for them because they're little tiny little set screws. We put them in the lathe. And you turn them down. Make sure the tool bit's on center. Very important. I've had students, tool bit's too high. They break the tool bit. And what happens is it kicks up a burr and it will not screw into your vise. So don't be in a hurry. It only takes a couple minutes to make them. You need three of them. So you take your three and you make them. You put them in your box so that when you, we do get the casting, you'll have to. Finish machining the casting, finish machining the jaw, and you can put all your vice together and then make it look pretty. All right. We're going to talk about the Bridgeport milling machine tonight. Next week, it's the seventh week, we will review for the midterm. I will start at 6 o'clock, and I will have the midterm in my hand. Okay? And I will go over it, but I won't give you the answers. I will say there's a question kind of like, kind of like Jeopardy does, kind of like that. Okay, you need to know about what takes this to do this. You know, stuff like that. Okay, yes, 
Yes, it's going to be on the computer. Okay. Yes, you will need your machinist handbook. You will need a calculator. Okay. Calculator, machinist handbook. It is not open note. If I hear a cell phone, if I see a cell phone the day of the midterm, you will be asked to sign out and you will be out. Okay? I can assure you, Professor Higley will back me on that. No phone, no way, no how. Okay? If I hear it go off, you're out of here. I've had that happen in the past where a student had it in his pocket. They end up failing. Please, don't let me see it. Make sure it's out of sight. And we'll do the same thing. We'll mix everybody up again. No talking during the midterm at all. Zero. I can assure you if you missed a class or a lecture, there's that much information that we go over that it will make it very difficult, not to pass, but it, you'll, you'll miss a lot of information. So I highly recommend you go back on Blackboard and review all the notes from day <coughs> one of lecture, whenever we, first nice kind of, but go over the Blackboard because I guarantee you Stuff we go over in here, stuff we go over in the shop will be on the quiz. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. We'll talk about the milling machine tonight. We won't be using the mill until after the spring break. Some of you people, some of you guys in here may already know how to use a Bridgeport mill. Okay? It's not that difficult. Make sure the back here, and we'll talk about that. We'll go over the videos, and I'll, I may stop them as it's going so that we can, if I can point out certain things to you on that. All right. safety glasses and observe all safety tools applicable to operating machinery. The Bridgeport mill uses a collet to hold the tool in place. This collet uses an RB Okay, do you see the slot? There's a key. Do not force it. Stick your finger in there, feel around, slide it in, turn the draw bar clockwise. There's a break. You pull it towards you. To loosen it, you pull it away from you. You should only have to loosen it one turn, and you take and tap the top of the draw bar. It's on a taper. It knocks it out. If you loosen it all the way up, and get the threads loose, what ends up happening when you hit it, it ends up stripping out the draw bar. So don't do it. Just one or two turns, that's it, and you hit it. And I will show you guys how to do that. A draw bar, which comes in through the top of the machine, threads into the top of the collet and secures the collet inside the machine. There's a keyway in the collet that lines up your See how he's sticking his finger in there? So he turns it till he finds the spot. It's kind of like on the, the Morse taper. You find that and it snaps in. Okay. Break, you hold, you pull towards you. Make sure when you're done, you take that off. I had one student one time turn it on. That'd be like me taking a pipe and throwing it at you. you take, it could really hurt you really bad. It's kind of like the chuck key in the chuck. That piece this long, come around, hit you. 
could hurt you really, really bad. So make sure when you're, when you're done tight, take it off Im immediately, immediately. Okay. This video will demonstrate changing gears on the Bridgeport Mill. The Bridgeport Mill has two speeds, a high and a low range. To change from high to low, the gear change lever is depressed and swung into the back. Okay. There's a little pin. You push it in, and it's got some tension on it. You just push it away, and it'll snap in. When you go from low to high, push it in, it will snap in. You grab the spindle and turn it, and it will hear a click. If you do not hear a click and you turn it on, everyone in the shop will know it. It will grind. Let's see if we can make a semester where nobody grinds the back gears. Okay? Usually somebody in this class will do it. Promise you. It always happens. Somebody will, and I'll say, that's what it sounds like. To test it, turn the spindle on, and the machine should be in low range. To move from low to high, again, to press the lever and swing it. Be sure the pin engages in the hole to be sure it's fully engaged in high gear. If it is not engaged fully when the spindle is turned on, the gears will grind. See how he's grabbing the chuck? He's making sure that it snaps in. Okay. To ensure that the machine is in high gear, grab the spindle and make sure you can turn it and that it doesn't feel like it's in neutral. You will feel a little bit of resistance on it. In neutral, it will spin freely. Make sure that the machine is actually in gear, and then turn the spindle on. Make sure that the spindle is on when you turn that handle. Because it works. And I don't know if anybody in here is familiar with a snowmobile, with a clutch. That's how it works. There's a belt and a spring pulley that works like this. And if you go to turn that without it on, you can screw it up. So you turn it on. As you turn it, you can spin it, and it will go higher and lower. Okay? Do not turn that unless the spindle is on. This is industry standard. 
Left and right is X, in and out is Y, and down is Z. There are three main parts that control the movement on three axes. The X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. The table controls the longitudinal direction, or the X axis. Next, the saddle which the table rests upon controls the cross treble, or Y axis. Last is the knee, which the table and the saddle sit upon, and it moves in the up and down direction, or Z axis. side of the head. The quill is used for drilling and tapping. There's a lock also. See that? That locks the quill up and down. Fully secure the quill There's a stop. The That's a stop. All the way up inside the head. And the stop moved up and then tightened along with the quill lock. This will prevent the quill from creeping down during milling. This is just the opposite of putting this it in. Will demonstrate removing a tool from the Bridgeport mill. Always wear eye protection and observe all safety rules applicable to operating machinery. Take the vice handle, put it on top of the drawbar. Engage the brake to lock the spindle in place and loosen the drawbar. Pull towards you. Turn it about three times. And then he'll take the end and he taps it and knocks it off. The tool is not released at this point. Because the taper of the collet is still holding it. That's what locks it. Take the handle, tap it on top of the drawbar to break the taper free, and release the tool. At this point, the tool can be loosened the rest of the way by hand mm -hmm. and remove the collet from the bridge port mill. Any questions? The collet's come in various sizes, eighth inch, quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, depending on what size end mill you're going to use. You want to use a bigger end mill? Yeah, the, the, you know, you'll see like seven eighths, three quarters, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, depending on what size end mill. You never want a machine with a drill chuck, okay? I mean, I see, no one in my class, but I see people in the shop who put an end mill on a drill chuck. First of all, you got it sticking out, it's on a taper, and you, you can actually bend the drill chuck. It's not made to mill, it's made to drill. It's made to go down. You're only holding on three points with the drill chuck, where you have the collet grabs the whole, the whole diameter except for the three little slots that are in it. They make various sizes of collets too. Yeah, 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 they have from eighth inch up to seven eighths. They actually even make stepped ones that will actually go like this and come out. We'll talk about that when we get to the milling section. We will be using the mill after the second eight weeks. We'll talk about that. We're waiting for you guys get the rest of your parts. And I'll, I may even give a demonstration on Wednesday because I may take the Bridgeport mill, instead of punching the holes in the ladder hook, I may have you guys drill it because then you guys can A, learn how to use what's called the edge finder. 
And let's see who remembers this on Wednesday. The diameter of an edge finder is 0 0.2 hundred thousandths. Okay? Half of that is 0 0.1. So you touch it, it wiggles. When it kicks off straight, that's the edge. You move it, you move it over 100 thousandths, make that your zero point. I will go over that. Let's see who remembers what the diameter of an edge finder is. We'll go over that because you will need to know how to do that when you drill your jaw. So we can kind of do that, kill two birds with one stone because what I'll have you guys doing is I'll have you shearing, I'll have you maybe drilling, I'll have one bending because you can't do the punching if you've got the bending. So what we'll do is kind of this way you guys can A, work in the shop, B, kind of learn something. And see, so when we go get to the next part, I won't really have to go over it again. I mean, I will, obviously, to give you a demonstration, but I want to see what you guys remember. Like I said, I can assure you, and I don't know what week, there's going to be a process plan quiz on the various parts of your vice. That's why it's very important that you learn the tools, the the center drill, the live center, the 0 to 1 micrometer, the, the scale, the combination square. All these things that I, so I, so I teach you the right name. So when you go to do the process plan, because you guys are going to have to write a process plan that says, if you were to give this to somebody, they could be able to go in the shop, take the material, take your list, Figure out what tools they need and go make your, you might get the nut, you might get the screw, you might get the jaw, you might get the whatever. The same thing on a quiz. So it's very important that you listen and learn. In fact, write down on the back of the print. So when you go to do that, all the tools that you've used. Has anybody started filling this out? This is your actual dimensions that you're supposed to hit. So as you make your parts, fill it in. Because this is what happens every semester. Ah, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. Last night of the lab, you know what everybody's sitting in the classroom doing? Measure. Taking their vice apart and measuring it. So think about this now. You're done with your nut, you're done with your screw, and you're done with this, and you're done with that, right? Why don't you, Wednesday, print this out also? Bring it in, fill it in, so that means you've got your nut done and your screw done. Yes? Yes, yes. It's supposed to be on there. I don't know where it's supposed to be, in the blackboard thingy. Measurement sheet, I think. Project measurement sheet. I don't know. It should be on black. Is it on there? Okay. Oh, it's not out there? Okay. Oh, you can't print it out yet? Okay. That's another thing that you should do because if that's one less thing you have to do. It'll take you a few minutes to measure every part. So, all right. Any other questions? All right. I don't have anything else. Next week... Midterm review.